Central Sensitization Revisited. Hello, I'm Baram Jam. Please stay with me for the next two minutes. In the early 1990s, when I graduated from PT school, my focus was on finding biomedical and anatomical problems with my patients and immediately attempt to fix them, or at least refer them on. Then in the 2000s, thanks to David Butler, I got introduced to the term central sensitization, and I started using that as a diagnosis everywhere. I diagnosed my patients as having central sensitization if they presented with severe, prolonged, non-mechanical pain that wasn't responsive to various manual therapies and exercises. Now in the 2020s, the suggestion of pain scholars and researchers is for clinicians to discontinue the use of the term central sensitization for diagnosing patients with complex pain. Here's the article from the Journal of Orthopedic and Sports Physiotherapy, Central Sensitization in Musculoskeletal Pain. Lost in translation? The terms central sensitivity syndrome and nociplastic pain have been proposed for conditions such as persistent low back pain, fibromyalgia, and chronic fatigue syndrome where there's no evidence of tissue damage. The authors of this paper discourage clinicians from diagnosing patients with central sensitization and using it for patients who may have psychosocial issues, as it's just not that simple. I'm honestly as confused as you are now. Persistent pain is truly complex. I'll continue to refer to some of my complex patients as having a hypersensitive nervous system, which is often due to many biological, psychological, social, immune, and environmental factors. To decide if a patient possibly has complex pain, have them answer the six simple questions on the homepage of thepaintruth.org. Thank you.